and welcome back to Dial H. Today we have a very special video where we get to cover all of the Avengers 60th swap chases. We did manage to get a full set. Unfortunately, no Mephisto, but man, this set is one of the coolest since, like, I mean, I think like the Doom chases, like it's been years. It's, so. it's hard to nail down like a solid chase sub theme. Like it seems like it's hard to, and I don't, I'm not a huge fan of like the Venomized or Karna guys or they're okay. The, like know. the Gwens, like I'm not a big fan of like a lot of different random stuff. And sometimes it just feels like, like there's not really a theme where it's just like different versions of the Avengers or something. Yeah. But yeah, this is like a cool storyline, cool villains, and it's a full set of them. So yeah. yeah. I love just all the variants, you know, the combination characters. It's, it's just great. But in today's video, we are going to cover who we think is the worst to the best for you and your sideline if you are looking at playing these chases. So Simeon, why don't you go ahead and kick us off with number nine. Number nine. It's going to be Thor. Uh, I don't think this would come to a surprise to many people. He does have some good qualities. I'm not going to rag on him too much, but at the end of the day, his damage output isn't high enough to like put him in like the top area. And also he doesn't really bring a lot of support stuff to the others. He does have a weird way to heal if you're like playing multiples and not mm -hmm. using him as swap. Uh, but his big thing for me, if I'm going to put him on sideline, is he has a stop click on click nine. Um, so so does Dark Phoenix, but his stop click gives him stop toughness, and then it does something that I would never do, and that's <laughs> free KO Thor. Uh, if you do, choose a friendly character, roll a d6, heal the chosen character equal to half the result. So yeah, probably the worst type of regen is just giving your opponent 50 to 100 Hey, did points. you want points? Yeah, he does have traded enhancements. His top dial at either point line is like decent stats. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you're looking for things to enhance your team other than just enhancement, uh, he's really just not the guy for you. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think the biggest pros are the stop click and the enhancement. He's a 12 for 4 with Psychic Blast top dial, but ultimately, in comparison to the others, he falls a bit flat. At number 8... We've got kind of like his little pal, his brother. They're both rocking the, yeah. the black leather. They saw the, the Blade movie, and they yeah. got stylized. Uh, it's Hound. So Hound, uh, kind of like the, the mirror of Thor. So instead of enhancement, he's handing out Empower with his trait. Uh, same trait going there. He's got Combat Reflexes, Super Senses, and Toughness as a defense power. And then Exploit Weakness, Battle Fury, but he can still be carried by people who have Masters of Evil. He's also got some healing, but overall, he's not an incredibly mobile attacker. Um, it is a sideline space, which once again is reduced. You only get the six sideline spaces, and if you have other things outside of the swap chases, it's just tough to justify him. He has a lot of damage output, potentially, but the no movement attack, it, it makes it really difficult to justify. Uh, the one big thing to boot with Hound is that he has the animal keyword. So if you wanted to put the Avengers 60th chases on an animal theme team, you can do that with him. So he's coming in at number eight. Yeah. It is what it is. He's I still good, but he's just not the other chases, you know? Out of the two chases that we put at bottom, ninth and eighth, I think it's because they're kind of like tertiary supports for Dark Phoenix, which just kind of like goes to show how good of a chase that one is. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're kind of like her minions. And so I think that's why, you know, because they're not like leading armies. They're yeah. just, you know. They're her pets. Yeah. The chain. Well, he's got a call. You know, he has a chain. He has a chain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number seven. Number seven. We're going with Kid Thanos for number seven. So Kid Thanos is actually, you know, not the only taxi, but he is a cool taxi for the Masters of Evil. Uh, he does a couple interesting things. So he's got phasing passenger four, which... We love phasing Passenger 4. It yes, is we do. so good. We really do. Uh, it really is fun. Uh, when he's given a move action after resolutions, you can deal one damage to each adjacent opposing character, uh, which is good for pinging like certain characters. I know I heard a few people at States talk about playing him and how they would use him to take down things that, I mean, things like Maggot doesn't have a reducer, so even though it takes it a few times to do it, even just getting people off of certain clicks... Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of fun. Stop clicks without reducers, just yeah. moving through them. Like, free damage without rolling, I think, is always pretty good. Yeah, it's not the same as, like, pen damage or unavoidable, but 
damage is damage, so it's kind of like a knockback, but you don't have to activate anything. Uh, he also has a stop click, so he is another option if you want to swap into somebody to not, like, you know, your opponent's got, like, the, all their figures cleared, and they're going to do a lot of attacking next turn. Maybe you swap into him for that kind of aspect. Uh, and then he's got uh, special prob control that he doesn't start with on either dial. It's mm -hmm. on his bottom half, so you can swap into it potentially. Uh, and that's when Kid Thanos uses it to re-roll an opposing attack roll. If the attack misses, after resolutions, you give them an action token. So, but for what it's worth, he does have prob his whole dial, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think Kid Thanos has some interesting combos with Ghost Goblin, who we'll talk about later, just with the free damage aspects. If you don't have a taxi, I think Kid Thanos is, you know, potentially your taxi. I think, uh, you know, depending on your build, Kid Thanos could be higher in the ranking. Definitely. But as a whole, just generally looking at them, where they'll fit, you have to account for that, right? Like, if somebody can fit into more teams... I think that overall makes them better as a figure. Kid Thanos definitely has his specific purposes, but I think seven is pretty fair for his placement. Yeah. I think these next two are pretty close, but at number six, we've got Black Skull. He's got a lot going on. He's got the symbiote traits. So you know, he's getting the plasticity, the super senses. Can't shoot him if you're within four. He's got free. He can roll a D6 on the leadership. If he gets it, he can make a War Machine bystander, which has some sidestep. It's giant energy explosion, and the Masters of Evil team ability, which is really nice. He's also got Charge Flurry, Stealth, and Giant Reach 2. The thing uh, that puts Black Skull lower for me is that his stats just aren't that amazing. On his Charge Flurry, like open and click, he's an 8, 10, 17, 3. So in the right situation, that absolutely can be good. If you've got some Masters of Evil to like debuff their defense, drop them a bit, absolutely. He's got Steel Energy down the rest of his dial. So I think you have some opportunity to kind of come back with him. Right. And he's a great chase to start with across the board because you can always roll for that chance of a free bystander. Right. So if yeah. you have the sideline space, uh, I think Black Skull is pretty much always a consideration. But I think um, outside of like the free pog generation and then, you know, just the kind of mediocre stats. And then also like, you know, if you're down dial, yeah, he has steel energy, but now he's just a charge piece. Is it worth it to switch into him, heal one, and then, you know, maybe you're making something happen. I know he does have super senses shape change, so he is hard to hit, but right. I don't know. He's it's... the one I'm, like, the most confused on, I think. Yeah, um, I think he's definitely a good option in certain team builds and certain varieties. Um, I do like the idea of having him as one of the swaps, and we're getting into the area now where if you're going to play, like, just these on your sideline, mm -hmm. you might as well like. Oh, you him. always have him start. Again. Yeah, he yeah. will always start if you've got the space. I, I've had I've had lots of games where mid game I lose my main leadership and action economy really hurts if you still have oh, enough characters yeah. to act. So getting a mid game like leadership swapped in, not terrible. That's actually yeah, that's a really good point. You know, yeah. if you lose your leadership piece, you you really want that action back, but. I think uh, in the comments, guys, if you have your own like list, please let us know what it is. I think Black Skull might be the most debated on in this list, at yeah. least in my opinion, because I think he could very easily be lower or higher here. More than likely higher, but I think you could make an argument in either direction. Moving on, though, who do we got? Next up, another controversial one. This is going to be Doom Supreme. Beautiful. Uh, very cool sculpt, very cool character. Uh, kind of. Uh, the jerk of the group. Uh, <laughs> but bit. yeah, Doom Supreme, he's got a couple things going on. So obviously, either point value that you start him at, he's got Pulse Wave, which always a good thing to have. He has the same damage power his entire dial, and that's Leadership Protected Outwit. Uh, so can't outwit this power. Uh, and then he's got, when an opposing character within range uses Outwit, Perplex, or Probability Control after resolutions, choose one, remove an action token from a friendly character, Heal a friendly character yeah. one click, or Doom Supreme can use uh, can use the used power until he chooses again. So unlike Faust, he doesn't have to roll, no roll. but his effects aren't the same. They're, mm -hmm. I mean, arguably better. Uh, I know removing an action token from somebody in the right situation can be huge, whew. especially if you don't have your leadership in like position or they don't have willpower. You know, a lot of situations where just yoinking an action token off somebody that might make someone rethink using one of those powers. Uh, he has a special defense ability. His last 
four clicks, and that's invulnerability, mastermind, regeneration, and that's also protected out with. So uh, bottom dial will swap into him for some masterminding, for some regen rolls to heal back up, anything like that. And then he has a trait that is opposing characters within range, which is six, uh, that were not part of your opponent's starting force, can't use protected outwit or safeguard, safeguard anything. So safeguard outwit or, you know, any specific power that they safeguard now. Interesting, yeah. But yeah, I think we finally got into like the, uh, the kind of niche tactical pieces with mm -hmm. Doom where you're denying certain powers from characters, you're denying the ability to have protect outwit or whatever for characters that get swapped in. Uh, you're also making your opponent kind of go between that situation of a rock and a hard place yeah. at times where, are you sure you want to re-roll that? Because if you do, I'm going to pull a token off of whoever. Right. Somebody's scary, right? But I think in the in the right hands and the right setup, uh, Doom can be just invaluable, just absolutely amazing. He's so. definitely a top uh, <clears throat> swap in piece. I don't know if I always start with him, but I know that probably not. No. Depending on what my opponent's playing, I want to have him as an option. Yeah, because if they've got a lot of outwit prop perplex, if they have those whatever. perplex bombs, and you run up to him, it's like, all right, are you sure you want to do that? Yeah. I'm just gonna pull all my actions off. If you do. <laughs> my team is gonna be clear and healed. Number four. Ooh, probably. I mean, not probably. It is without question the best sculpt of the chases. Yeah, <clears throat> we got Ghost Goblin. So Ghost Goblin, pretty simple. He's a running shot, energy explosion piece, but he also has an attack ability, which is energy explosion, poison, and then see-through break blocking. Uh, he also deals penetrating damage flat across the board. So to revisit Kid Thanos very quickly, he can move through you, ping you for one. Switch to Ghost Goblin, he poisons you, pen damage. Two free damage from a 50-point character, and then Ghost Goblin also sports some perplex to go with it. Down dial, he's got a defense power, which is energy shield deflection, regen, and super senses. Not a bad thing to swap into. And then I think what gets him so high up there is like if these chases get damaged, a lot of them get like weaker or like less desirable on the back half of their dial. Ghost Goblin gets kind of scary. So he's got some sidestep, energy explosion, but then he also has perplex out with. Once per turn, when Ghost Goblin uses either to target an opposing character, after resolutions, he may deal one damage to an opposing character adjacent to the targeted character. So, once again, more free damage. In a situation where you have Kid Thanos and Ghost Goblin, there's a potential to deal four damage for free with yeah. that combo, which is just absolutely nutty. Outside of that, I think he's very clearly the best ranged attacker. Penetrating energy explosion in situations where it's good, it's fantastic, it's amazing. I've said it a million times, but you probably see it in another video. <laughs> I absolutely love Ghost Goblin. I think he's awesome. And uh, in my opinion, he is a figure that will always make your swap sideline. I think yes. you will always have Ghost Goblin. Uh, we ran ID cards. So uh, before I dip into that uh, quick thing, we, we ran ID cards that were literally just a pen poison piece. You'd Pay points, you give your opponent three yeah, rusty? points. Rusty. Rusty. Yeah, I think there's another one too. Chamber. Uh, Chamber oh, yeah. and Rusty both did it. But yeah, just because one pen damage for free, no rolling attacks, is really good in situations. And it so is, man. Having him sidelined for that specific reason alone is really good. But the reason why you can do like a full move with like Kid Thanos and then swap is because when you swap characters when you take one from a sideline and replace another character it checks for i think only two things if they were given an action that turn mm -hmm. and if they were carried that turn and since uh, it doesn't matter this is a new if, character yeah it doesn't matter if he was carried or whatever because poison checks to see if you were replaced or well it doesn't matter if he was carried but it doesn't matter if he moved because it checks to <laughs> see if you were placed or moved and Swapping doesn't check or doesn't say that you uh, it's a keep different track of form that. of placement. Yeah, so it gets around that So yeah, yeah. swapping doesn't consider you uh, if you moved before you swapped or not. So you're allowed to poison uh, It's a nasty combo. But yeah long. I love it long story short You're allowed to swap in and poison regardless of what you did prior Next up is the old iron inquisitor Howard Stark himself. So <sighs> this guy's nasty. Yeah, he's a real real solid tech piece um, so the first thing that he's got is the Armored for the Council of Red trait. It's free. Choose a character in your KO area and choose a standard power printed on that character's card. Iron Inquisitor can use that chosen power until you choose again. Just 
some free picking of power. Uh, you can actually build around that to an, a certain degree. I heard degree. people talking about using it with constructs. Yeah. So KO a, a stop sign, and now he's got barriers. Yeah, bystanders Fantastic. go to your KO area. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you got quite a few options with just that alone. Uh, next up, he has for his first two clicks on his 50-point line or his first five clicks on his 100-point line, he has Deal with the Devil, and that's impervious but can reduce penetrating damage, which is always that's, nice. Yeah, on the, a 50 point figure too, like that is the uh, the best reducer combo that you can have is impervious but can reduce pen damage, and then adjacent friendly characters can use mastermind but only to choose characters with the masters of evil keyword, and that is protected outwit. So you just have protected, to deal with that power. Reduce pen, hands out mm -hmm. mastermind. I mean, oof, that is tough to crack. Can't use mastermind himself though. It's only a very characters. <laughs> well, it's the deal with the devil. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, and then lastly, what I think makes him just really okay. utility is he has a special damage power that is, again, the same clicks that his defense power is, first five, first two on his 50-point line, that is perplex, and when he uses it to target another friendly character, that character can use probability control until your next turn. So you Amazing. boost a defense and get a prob out of it. You boost an attack and get to reroll like the attack if you need be. It's a great combo. It's a really fun combo, and uh, honestly, I I can see a lot of people using that. Dude. I think uh, perplexing up before you take off for like an alpha strike or yeah, that's massive. You know. Giving somebody like Sky Tyrant a prob is mm -hmm. real, real deadly. Iron Inquisitor. Yeah. I mean, you could. I think you could make an argument that he's the best chase. That's how good he is. I think one through three are pretty. Uh, debatable you can yeah. stack them however you want but i absolutely love him tk prop perplex piece who's picking powers handing out mastermind and also not dying himself like yeah and if you need him to do something else well hey look at that <laughs> well, yeah and like you can perplex like perplex thor and then he gets prob thor goes in and attacks with like his boosted attack re-rolls it if need be whatever and then you swap him out into like you know whoever uh, whatever you need or swap into him and then you know defensively boost your defense and get prob that same turn and getting um, the value with his damage power doing something and then swapping into somebody else who can now also get value like i feel like iron inquisitor is the figure that you're pretty much just always getting value with mm -hmm. and at number two maybe controversial we've got dark phoenix and i think dark phoenix is at number two for us because she is more specific i'm sure you guys have heard all about her if you're in any Facebook gate, groups, if you're on HC Realms, any of the websites. Check out HC Units, though. That's the best one. They yeah. don't have forums, but he, <laughs> the best website. Uh, Clay Wood does all that, and he, he uploaded our entire top eight by himself. I sent it to him, actually. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I saw him like post the link, and I was just like, oh, man. How did you get this? Well, like, <laughs> he posted it on like my post of the top eight, but sure. yeah, I was just like, Wow, I, I could have done that, but I was too lazy, so I'm glad someone else <laughs> I don't know. Do we... Comment below. Do we have access to post tournaments on HG units? I don't know about tournaments, but, I mean, you can do builds. You can do builds. Yeah. But Dark mm -hmm. Phoenix at number two. Um, you guys know what she does. She's got the hypersonic. If she's given a move action, you can move two brutes half their speed, or you can give a brute a free attack. I mean, poison, steel energy for the attack ability. She's got a stop click with super senses regen. She's also just a hypersonic speed piece with penetrating psychic blast. She's 50 points. She's got the power cosmic too. Like, I mean, she's just incredible. She's a solid attacker. She's incredible support with the right build though. And that is primarily why I think we have her at number two is right. because it requires specific interaction. Those specific interactions are fantastic but yeah. it still requires specific interaction, whereas Iron Inquisitor, you know, can be on more teams. Yeah, any team can so benefit from that. That kind of argues against what I just said, actually, because yeah. he's lower. But when she's on the right team, I mean, making Sky Tyrant attack again for free is incredible. Making Prime Hulk attack again for free, that 10-point little bodyguard. Uh, getting your guys moved out, you know, there's really cool combos to boost their speed. You can play stuff like Tempo or Peepers, and now they're moving instead of five, maybe seven or eight. So the mobility she can give a team is just incredible. She's not a bad attacker herself. She's pretty stout. She's not exactly easy to take down either with the stop click. She's hard to argue against. And also, like, I mean, personally, I prefer Ghost Goblin, but look at that sculpt. I yeah. mean, 
come on. This can't be bad, right? No. <laughs> they the never coolest, give a good sculpt a bad dial. <laughs> one of the coolest phoenixes that we've seen in a while. Um, yeah. That's like actually like shrouding her. Yeah. All right. And finally, <laughs> number one, uh, just like we were saying how she only works on like certain teams, certain builds, you kind of have to focus. This guy, King Killmonger, he works on literally any team because a lot of people are equipped nowadays. A um, meta warper from the second you start yeah. building. Basically, and so really slapping him on sideline or on main force doesn't really matter. Uh, it's going to be a good option. Uh, and as we saw with Isaac Arnold Berkowitz's team, uh, his die roll for that certain trait, I'll read it here real quick. Uh, it is yes. willpower. And then for all friendly characters with this trait, when King Killmonger and or one or more adjacent friendly characters would be hit by an opposing equipped character, roll a d6. On a 4 through 6, which is a 50-50, the attacker misses all targets instead, and that's protected pulse wave. So That's the most insane yeah. part. Protected pulse wave, too. You can't break this formation. Well, no. you can, but if he hits the 50-50, you just waste it. Yeah. How much? And like I was saying with Isaac's team, uh, with Prodigy and Moira, you just have a loaded 5, so he's not going to have to roll. Like he, Technically, he can, but... He just has a five that he can replace with Prodigy, mm -hmm. and then you're just succeeding that. And so if you're coming you know, in with equipped characters, you're not going to do you damage. You can't. It's the against one that hit specific team. Guaranteed yeah. miss. So yeah, yeah, the Moira gives Prodigy a rally die. His rally die allows you to place a single D6 with a five. Killmonger succeeds on a four through six. It's a single die. And therefore, if you come and attack the formation, auto succeed. Yep. It is, it's just one example of what you can do with King Killmonger, but another thing, you know, as far as like, you know, the, the main argument we're presenting here where it's like, how good is it in a general team? King Killmonger could quite literally be on any team and do something, be yeah. successful. Because on top of it, he also just has like Pensai Exploit. And Exploit top. And his, yeah. his down dial too, like what does he get to a 10, 12, 19, 4 with charge? Yeah. So his, yeah, his last reach. click, if you can manage to get on there, or you like have dark just happen to be there. Hit yeah. first off click, yeah. Charge, running shot, sidestep with blades, claws, fangs, precision strike, steel energy, giant reach of two, twelve for four, nineteen defense. It's a prior you ever dial. go into black skull. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's it's, it's a pretty solid dial. I mean, especially for a fifty point investment, it's pretty insane. Uh, and then yeah, just I don't know. On top of that, he starts with a rollout with Impervious. It's not reduces pen per Impervious, but it is Impervious itself. So mm -hmm. he already has that rollout. Um, I think we've seen, you know, Apocalypse get a lot of play, not just specifically because of the D6 rollout with the, with the Blades. Yeah. You know, but this is a similar thing. And a 50-50 rollout, you know, you don't even have to do the Prodigy combo because there's things like... Grandmaster, who can re-roll a single D6. That's true. There's the Scott Porter figures that'll be out at some point. Those guys are going to break a lot of <laughs> So So there, there's a lot of ways to re-roll that, mm -hmm. uh, but then there's also just a way to guarantee it. And even if you're not, like, outside of the roll even, like, if mm -hmm. you're not re-rolling it, if I'm your opponent and you have that sitting and my entire team is, like, equipped, or at least my attackers are, I'm looking at that and I'm just spending so much time thinking, like, I have to take a 50 50 and you really don't have an option so you just put your opponent in a tough spot like to me as far as like building goes king killmonger feels very very similar to scarab when he first came out because instantly everyone's like okay am i equipping as much now and i think the answer is somehow still yes uh you know great counters to him are like mad jim who can optionally equip people like a, right. a great combo right now is sky tyrant mad jim start sky tyrant unequipped if they don't have King Killmonger, here's your Necro Sword. If they do, eh, we'll just leave him be. Yeah. Plain Jane. So yeah, guys, that is our ranking of the Avengers 60th Chases. If you guys have differing opinions, please comment below. I'd love to hear them. Specifically, where do you rank Black Skull? Where do you rank Dark Phoenix? Where are those guys for you? Yeah, and then, what's your number one? Uh, I know personal preferences aside, like... We both really like Ghost Goblin. Yeah. That's just the coolest sculpt. Uh, I also really like his team up with the Sinister so cool. Syndicate stuff. So cool. Um, that's another thing that we may get into at some point if you guys want is the team ups because there's no swapping allowed with the team up cards. It's but you all, can uh, swap into a team up card. Yeah, true. Which is so bizarre. But I don't know why so you'd ever do that because you can't swap back. But <laughs> yeah, guys. <laughs> 
That's everything. That's the chases. And wait, if they were looking to buy Hero Clicks, what is, it, what is it that they can do? They can go to shop.wizkids.com and use code DIALH10 to save 10% off their Hero Clicks purchases. So check them out. Right now they've got a deal going on, so they'll probably have some brick and case incentives. They've been doing that for quite a while now, but yeah. There are sometimes some really good deals there, and sometimes you just have to buy a item and you get free stuff. So, yeah. yeah, buy a brick, get a brick going on right now. Battle World or Legion of Superheroes. So, if you're looking for some of that Golden Age stuff, it's a great time to buy. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.